good morning students today we are going to see about geography lesson lithosphere that is the endogenetic processes what is lithosphere lithosphere is one of the spheres of the earth it means land what do you mean by endogenetic processes endogenetic processes is the process that comes from the earth's interior to the earth's surface all the activities from below the earth comes to the earth's surface and they build the landscape and the topography of the earth exogenetic process means the forces that act on the earth's surface by the different agents like wind water glaciers and what is their work they tear the landscape into smaller forms that is it may be a mountain or a hill or whatever or elevated plains into smaller forms and they also disintegrate the landforms created by the endogenetic processes so there are two processes that act on the earth endogenetic process from the earth's interior to the earth's surface exogenetic process that is the external forces like wind and water that act on the surface of the earth to disintegrate all the landscapes and the topography that is formed by the endogenetic processes and today's lesson you are going to see about the spheres of the earth the internal structure of the earth rock type and its cycle internal processes in the internal processes we are going to see about the plate tectonics then about the movement of the continental plates there are three movements of the continental plates earthquakes tsunami and volcanoes now so many million and millions of years ago on the earth there was a big landmass called pangaea and an one ocean very big ocean body called the pantalacia so it was one big landmass and one big water body slowly because of the continental plates tectonic movements the entire continental plate started drifting away from each other and this is how the continental uh, continents have been formed later on scientists found out that there was a tectonic movement of the continental plates that created the continents and the other oceans so this plate tectonics on the earth created many smaller continental plates and the big landmass became divided into different continental plates so it became the continental plates and the oceanic plates this is how the earth was formed and later the scientists came to know about that and explained this theory to the entire world in this lesson we are going to see about the different spheres of the earth now we are going to know about the composition of the spheres of the earth so the earth has three types of spheres namely the lithosphere the atmosphere and the hydrosphere the land constitutes of the lithosphere the air constitutes of the atmosphere and the water bodies that is the oceans and the seas con consist of the hydrosphere all these three together create a sphere that is called as the biosphere where life exists only on the earth we have the biosphere 
so earth is called as the living planet the conditions on the earth is suitable for organisms to live so earth is called as the living planet in this lesson we are going to focus on the lithosphere only that is the landforms and the endogenetic processes that is going to act from the interior of the earth to the surface of the earth now have you wondered what is the earth made up of or what is lying below the earth's surface now the earth's surface is a vast area nearly 510 million square kilometer where the four spheres of the earth interact the abiotic spheres are the lithosphere hydrosphere and the atmosphere and the biotic sphere is the biosphere so atmosphere lithosphere and hydrosphere constitutes the abiotic sphere and all the three where the life form exists is called as the biosphere that is termed as the biotic sphere structure of the earth the outer surface of the earth and the inner core of the earth are different in nature the earth's interior is divided into three layers namely the crust mantle and the core crust mantle and core the crust is the outer layer of the earth where we live and it's also called as the skin of our earth and it ranges between 5 to 30 kilometers and it is the solid and rigid layer of the earth the thickness of the crust is very hard below the continent but it is very thin in the Uh, oceanic uh, shelf the crust is classified into continental crust and oceanic crust the major elements of the crust are silica and aluminum and silica and magnesium the continental crust is made up of silicon and aluminum the oceanic crust is made up of silicon and magnesium the interior part that lies beneath the crust is called as the mantle it is about 2900 km thick here the major elements are silica and magnesium so it is called as sima the upper part is very thick it's solid whereas the inner part or the lower part is in the molten form this molten form is called as the magma the innermost part is called as the core and it is the hottest layer of the earth that lies below the mantle this core is composed of nickel and iron so it is called as nephi The core is divided into the outer core and the inner core. The presence of large quantities of iron is responsible for the earth's gravitational force. 
as the earth rotates on its axis the liquid outer core spins over the solid inner core so the solid inner core is unable to move so it remains the solid and this creates a high pressure area that is it has the magnetic field hence it is responsible for the functioning of the magnetic compass so we have the three layers the crust the mantle and the core and we have the gravitational force which is a very important only on the earth we have the gravitational force so all the objects on the earth is attracted towards the earth the earth is like a magnet next we are going to learn about the rock types and its cycle now what is a rock it is the crust which is the storehouse of rocks it is an aggregate of all the minerals on the earth's crust and it is compact like the granite solid uh, like the granite soft as clay loose as sand so the, there are different types of rocks hard uh, soft and loose like the sand there are different types of rocks on the earth based on their structure they are divided so we have the igneous rocks sedimentary rocks and the metamorphic rocks the word igneous is derived from the latin word ignis meaning fire The interior of the earth contains very hot molten material called the magma. When the magma reaches the surface it is called as the lava and this lava on cooling is solidified and it settles down sir and it forms the igneous rocks. Igneous rocks are also called as primary rocks or mother rocks because all the other rocks are formed from the igneous rocks the sedimentary rocks are named after the latin word sediment meaning settle the rivers glaciers and wind carry bits of rocks and soil and deposit them on the earth it gets settled down on the earth and it is in different layers after a few million years these layers harden and become into compact rocks and they are called as sedimentary rocks now on the soil there are plant and animal matter they get dead they decay and they also settle down in the sedimentary rocks and they are called as fossils the best example for sedimentary rocks are sandstone and limestone metamorphic is derived from the latin word metamorphosis meaning change of forms the sedimentary rocks are subjected both the sedimentary rocks and the igneous rocks are subjected to extreme heat and pressure they change into one form or the other so it these rocks are called as metamorphic rocks 
for example limestone becomes marble so that is an entire change in the form of the rock so this is called as the metamorphic rock that is changing of the rock form from one to the other next we are going to learn about the rock cycle so we have three different types of rocks igneous sedimentary and metamorphic rocks and we are going to learn about the continuous processes of these rocks the rock cycle is a continuous process through which the igneous metamorphic and the sedimentary rocks are transformed from one form to the other the igneous rocks is found deep below the earth it has magma that comes to the surface of the earth becomes lava that lava gets solidified and it is transported and deposited and slowly it becomes the sedimentary rocks these sedimentary rocks they get buried after a few million years of uh, age it melts and become the igneous rocks so from the igneous to the sedimentary sedimentary to the metamorphic once again the metamorphic rocks becomes the igneous rocks so it is the rock cycle so it keeps on changing from one form to the other already i have told you about the endogenetic processes and the exogenetic process so the earth's uh, all the activities from the earth's interior to the earth's surface is called as the endogenetic process so we are going to learn about the internal processes of the earth what is this internal process below the earth's surface there is a lot of action going on so the heat generate and it ejects the materials from deep below the earth internal radioactivity is responsible for the endogenetic processes the lithosphere is divided into a number of huge slabs called as a tectonic plates otherwise a continental plates these tectonic plates are divided into major and minor plates based on their size they may be classified into the major and the minor plates collisions of these plates produce mountain ranges and all the other irregular surfaces on the earth both on the earth and on the ocean floor this is called as the plate tectonics the movement of the tectonic plates to create different landforms is called as plate tectonics this is due to the thermal energy from the mantle next we are going to see about the different uh, plate boundaries
there are different types of uh, plate boundaries they are convergent divergent and transform boundaries convergent divergent and transform boundaries the first one is the convergent boundary so there are different plate boundaries when they sink under each other it is called as convergent boundary the location where the plates sink under each other there is a subduction zone formed because of that fold mountains are formed for example the himalayas the himalayas are called as young fold mountains because they were recently formed the divergent boundary here the tectonic plates pull away from each other as the magma pushes up the mantle for example the mid atlantic ridge the conservative otherwise the transform boundary the plates move side by side each other horizontally for example san andres fault so we have three types of plate boundaries convergent where they move or subduction zone is formed for example the himalayas divergent when they pull away from each other example mid atlantic ridge transform boundaries where <coughs> its sides pass horizontally for example san andreas fault now there is lot of movement of the continental plates due to lateral compressional forces and the plates are always in the constant motion moving upwards and downwards but it is very slow so we cannot feel that this is called as folding of the mountains so mountains are formed by folding so they are called as fold mountains these process of folding creates lofty mountains ranges and the best example are the alps and the himalayas according to the plate tectonics the plates are in constant motion with an average rate of a few centimeters per year it may be very slow it takes millions and millions of years for the plate tectonics movements and the continents seem riding on them moving along the plate tectonics for example 250 million years of years ago the indian plate was a part of the gondwana land that is it was along with modern africa australia antarctica and south america it started drifting away and it started colliding with the asian continent approximately 140 million years ago the indian plate broke away and it became the gondwana land
and it became a landform along with Asia colliding, moving north and it start, got attached with the Asia. The collision with the Eurasian plate along the boundary between India and Nepal formed the organic belt. So we have the Tibetan plateau and the Himalayas formed because of uh, this uh, collision. So that is about folding, about uh, the formation of the Indian plate attached with the Eurasian plate, the formation of fold mountains, the Tibetan plateau in North India. The lithosphere is the solid part of the earth. The hydrosphere is the water bodies present on the earth and the air is the atmosphere present on the earth. All these three together is the biosphere where life form exists on the earth. The lithosphere is the solid part, the hydrosphere is the watery part and the atmosphere is the layer that envelops the entire earth. Formation of rocks, different formations are there and there are beautiful magnificent uh, rock formation in India like the Ajanta and the Ellora caves in Maharashtra. The next we are going to see about the internal processes of the earth. We have uh, different uh, processes of the earth that acts from the interior of the earth towards the surface. So we have the earthquake, the earthquakes is generally caused by the sudden vibration of the earth's crust which spreads outward in all directions as the waves are the source of the disturbance. of the earthquake is called as the focus of the earthquake. The point where the earthquake originates is called as the focus of the earthquake otherwise hypocenter. The point uh, generating elastic waves from the hypocenter is called as the epicenter of the earthquake. These epicenters are always uh, directly above the focus. The impact of the earthquake is felt uh, at the epicenter. The earthquake generates uh, seismic waves.
and these waves are different in nature force and speed depending on the nature of the medium through which it passes the medium may be a solid a water etc accordingly there are three major types of waves primary primary waves or p waves secondary waves surface waves so primary waves are the fastest of all the earthquake waves and they are the first to reach the epicenter these waves pass through solids liquids and gases they either push or pull through an average of 5 to 10 kilometers per second 5 to 10 kilometers per second the secondary waves otherwise called as s waves travel only through solids and these waves shake the ground perpendicular to the direction in which they propagate and they travel at a velocity of 8 kilometers per second the surface waves otherwise the l waves are similar to the primary waves and they travel primarily along the ground surface these waves are comparatively slower and are the most destructive waves the average velocity of these waves is 1 km to 5 km per second so we have the primary waves the secondary waves and the surface wave surface waves and the surface waves are called as the destructive waves the instrument which records the earthquakes is called as seismograph or seismometer the science that deals with earthquakes is called as seismology the science that deals with earthquakes is called seismology the instrument to measure the earthquakes is seismograph otherwise seismometer cf richter devised a scale to measure the magnitude of the earthquakes it is an open ended scale and this richter scale is used to estimate the severity of an earthquake the highest magnitude ever recorded is 9.5 on richter scale that is in south america on 
டிசம்பர் டுவெண்ட்டி சிக்ஸ் டூ தௌசண்ட் ஃபோர் அண்ட் அர்த்வேக் மெஷரிங் அ மேக்னிடியூட் ஆஃப் அபவ் நைன் ரிக்டர் ஸ்கேல் காஸ் த சீ ஃப்ளோ டு அப்லிஃப்ட் ரீப்ளேசிங் த சீ வாட்டர் அபவ் இட் வாஸ் அ ரிசல்ட் ஆஃப் த இந்தியன் ஆஸ்திரேலியன் பிளேட் சப்டக்டிங் பிலோ த யுரேஷியன் பிளேட் here are the list of uh, mountains that are formed by the folding ural mountains andes mountains vindhya alps satpura range rocky mountains sierra nevada the next uh, internal activity is the tsunami the word tsunami is a japanese term meaning harbor waves it is adopted to describe large seismically generated sea waves caused by earthquakes all earthquakes do not cause tsunami but when there is a continental generated by the sea waves sometimes earthquakes cause tsunami it may be also caused by submarine explosions and landslides so tsunamis are generated sometimes by earthquakes or landslides otherwise submarine explosion all some these activities take part uh, in the oceanic crust this uh, takes part in the continental crust so with that we come to the end of this session we'll continue in the next class good morning students this is the continuation of the geography lesson lithosphere endogenetic process so there are internal activities of the earth the first one is the earthquake then the tsunami then volcanoes a volcano is a vent or an opening of the surface of the earth crust through which hot solids liquids and gases uh, come out so inside the earth the interior part the hot liquid the magma chamber is formed the magma rises up from the earth's interior and erupts and when it reaches the surface of the earth it becomes lava volcanoes are formed sometimes when the plates are also moving apart so that is a drift in the continental plates because of that also volcanoes are formed the major components of the volcano are as follows
the magma chamber the vent and the volcanic cone so the magma chamber that is present in the interior of the earth is a large pool of liquid rock found below the surface of the earth the vent is the opening as an outlet for air smoke and ash the volcanic cone is a landform that is built by the magma ejected from the volcano so we have the magma chamber that lies deep in the interior of the earth whenever there is movement below the earth surface because of heat and pressure this magma chamber that in the solid form the magma uh, reaches the earth surface sometimes <clears throat> there is a main vent that reaches the earth surface there are also secondary vents that reaches the earth surface as well so the hot magma rises up to the earth surface when it reaches the surface it gets cooled and it starts uh, solidifying and it forms the lava so in the main vent it also arises in the secondary vent also it arises and we have the secondary cones formed here the major cones formed around the crater of the mountain <clears throat> the crater is a bowl shaped depression found at the top of the volcano through which the magma flows out there are so many volcanoes in the world some are active some are dormant now based on the periodicity of eruptions volcano is classified into active dormant and extinct active volcanoes are those which constantly eject volcanic lava gases and fragmented materials for example mount st helens in north america they are active and always uh, there are eruptions in these volcanoes dormant volcanoes otherwise called as sleeping volcanoes do not show any sign of a volcanic activity for a long period of time that is why they are called as dormant otherwise sleeping volcano sometimes there may be sudden eruptions that may cause unimaginable damage to life and property for example mount fuji in japan sometimes they are active most of the time they are dormant otherwise sleeping extinct volcano is a permanently uh, stopped volcano that has been active for some time <clears throat> so when the volcano permanently stops its action it becomes extinct volcano otherwise dead volcano for example mount kilimanjaro so based on the periodicity of eruptions volcanoes are classified into active volcano 
dormant volcano and extinct volcano active volcanoes are always erupting for example mount saint helens dormant they erupt for some time but they are always sleeping for a long time for example mount fuji japan extinct volcano they have been active for some times after that they have stopped their volcanic activity for example mount kilimanjaro volcanoes can be classified based on their structure and composition they are called as composite volcano volcanic dome shield volcano composite volcano is known as strato volcano otherwise conical volcano because it is formed by many layers of hardened lava pumice and volcanic ash mostly they are found in the pacific ocean for example mount fuji volcanic dome is roughly circular mound formed to the slow ejection of a viscous lava from a volcano because the lava is very rich in silica and because of its intensive viscosity it is prevented from flowing away far from the vent example patricutin that is in mexico in the volcanic dome all that is ejected the lava it's prevented from going away from the volcanic dome so it gets uh, it is very viscous cannot move far away from the volcano so it gets deposited here shield volcanoes are formed by intense viscous lava this is very intense because of its viscosity they gently slope along the sides of the volcanoes they gently flow along the slopes of the volcanoes and all the lava flows through the vent creates a shield outside the volcano so it is called as a shield volcano for example mauna lao that is in hawaii so based on the structure and composition of the volcano it is classified into composite volcanic dome and shield volcano distribution of earthquakes and volcanoes most of the earthquakes and volcanoes do not strike randomly but occur along the plate boundaries one such area is the circum pacific ring of fire circum pacific ring of fire otherwise called as the pacific rim so in this area the pacific plate meets uh, all the other continental plates so it is the most uh, important place where all the seismic and volcanic activities gradually happen and it is the active zone in the world
For examples, the other belts are Mid Oceanic Ridge, Mid Continental Belt, and Himalayan Belt. Now, this specific ring of fire, why it is seismically and volcanically active? This circumpacific ring. This specific ring of fire is a major area in the basin of the Pacific Ocean where many earthquakes and volcanic eruptions occur. It has 452 volcanoes. It is having some active volcanoes and dormant volcanoes. It is the home to 75% of the volcanoes and 95% of the earthquakes. There is a lot of activities here because it is the place where all the continental plates meet. This movement results in deep ocean trenches, volcanic eruptions and has earthquake epicenters along the boundaries where the plates meet these plays are called as fault lines. How do these eruptions occur? It is a result from subduction of oceanic plates beneath the lighter continental plates. The Pacific Ring of Fire runs through 15 countries in the world, including USA, Japan, Indonesia, Russia, Canada, etc. This specific ring of fire, most of the earthquakes and volcanic eruptions do not strike randomly, but sometimes it acts along the boundaries. Next, we are going to see about the effects of volcanoes the constructive effects of the volcanoes and the destructive effects of the volcanoes. What are the constructive effects? Because of the eruptions of the lava, the volcanic materials are very rich in fertility. It maintains or enriches the soil. The hot volcanic region helps in generating geothermal energy. Many dormant and active volcanoes are the most attractive tourist spots of the world. The volcanic materials are used as building materials. So these are the constructive effects of volcanoes. Destructive effects. Because of the volcanic eruption, it causes earthquakes, flash floods, mudslide and rockfall. Lava can travel very far and burn, bury or damage anything in its path. The large amount of dust and ash makes breathing hard and irritable. Volcanic eruptions can alter the weather conditions and disturb transport in and around the volcanic region. So that is about the constructive and destructive effects of the volcanoes. So we saw about the volcanoes based on the periodicity of eruptions how volcanoes are classified into active, dormant and extinct the examples based on the structure and composition they are classified into composite, volcanic and shield volcano and the examples the importance of the circumpacific ring of fire, then the effects of volcanoes, both constructive and destructive. 
so now i am going to sum up the lesson so today you came to know about the different spheres of the earth the internal structure of the earth rock formation and its types about the rock cycle how the different rocks that is the igneous metamorphic and the sedimentary rocks change from one form to the other the internal process that is the endogenetic process from the earth from the earth's interior to the surface of the earth what happens in the plate tectonics the different types of tectonics that is the convergent divergent and the conservative boundaries and what are the different movements of the tectonic plates then the different movements are the earthquakes the seismic waves the tsunami and the volcanoes about the seismic waves there are three types primary secondary and surface waves the volcanoes its structure and composition classification based on the periodicity of eruptions classification based on structure and composition importance of the circum pacific ring of fire the constructive and uh, destructive effects of volcanoes so the different spheres of the earth are lithosphere atmosphere and hydrosphere all the three together is composed of the biosphere where life form exists so the earth is called as the living planet then about the structure of the earth the earth is composed of three layers the crust mantle and the core different types of rocks igneous sedimentary and metamorphic rocks the movement of the continental plates and with that we sum up the lesson thank you